And uh, try to feel her movement. Switching from hand to hand. Now I'm leaving the body. Thank you. So being on the outside, this kind of thing going on, you know, yeah, which is okay, but you ultimately want to be inside here. So we'll move, we'll try to take movement that occurs and move it into some form of technique. There's no right or wrong answer, okay? Uh, but just keep in mind that if you're on the outside, you only have limited movement and, and, and options at that point because this person will always advance faster than you can retreat, right? Because right now we're still a nice ease, right? So the whole idea would be to try to end, you know, so. We're just gonna feel whatever her motion comes. She comes back. We're moving to any technique that just has changed it from the open end to the other. Feeling the motion and whatever she brings. So we'll move into the arts. Okay. A technique, right? So um, what we're trying to go for right now is how to understand the flow of energy and the exchange of energy. Okay, so as energy comes this way, boom. I'm, I'm out, I'm, I'm free of the initial attack. Because I want to go, whoa, oh my god, I just, something just happened and I reacted. Now the second attack comes. That's, from that second attack motion, um, secondary motion is where we, we move into the art. Okay, so, don't, so in other words, I'm not initiating the secondary action, she's initiating the secondary action. By her choice, she could either stop, Nothing happens, and we walk away friends. All right? She can um, come back with a backslash, and I have to move that energy around me because it wants to come here. But as she pushes, I guide it up. And now I can move this different techniques. Right? She can, from this point, she can uh, decide to go for my legs. Okay? But I don't know what's going to occur. She decides that, not me. Okay? And I could do the third movement a lot of ways. Okay, so the training is learning patience. Okay? To wait for the secondary motion rather than you generating it yourself. So let's try to work on that a little bit. Thank you. Uh, these guys are going to pick you up later. Because I used to be that guy. And everybody beat up at the seminars. <laughs> so I know. Fine. So um, again, this is <clears throat> what we're doing is training tools, right? It's not um, practical or realistic, all right. But the purpose of this is to understand motion and energy, right? And um, and what we're going to do right now is learning how to see the patterns, if you will. Uh, although I, I, I hesitate to say that, um, but see movement and spacing, and create spacing. Okay, so it's just a training tool to get there. All right, and it's also just fun, all right? So we have two now, all right? So Liz will start off, right? She's primary, secondary motion, so primary, secondary motion.
Okay, so we're just playing and exploring with energy and movement. So the partner up. Remember to give a primary, secondary, so we can practice moving on. Uh, and um, and um, I saw some of us, you know, we're playing well with each other, but um, when you're training, you know, and you're learning a new concept, uh, keep in mind that you can, slow, you can slow it down because you're trying to retrain your body to, because um, we all can do arts. I mean, we can all just, we were pretty experienced individuals here. Um, so the idea that we're trying to explore is, you know, understanding energy and motion and how to um, use them in harmony to create um, the proper spacing that we need, right? <coughs> All right, so, but here's another last concept I'm going to leave with is what now? I saw some of us were striking, right? And then someone would try to do the technique to try to stop this from occurring, right? And reach and grab it, grab the wrist, right? And then I saw the guys with the weapon, right? And this happens all the time. And because they have a weapon, that's all they know. And they're just trying to do this. Right? And she's trying to do a technique on me. And we're Yes, right? Okay. So now let's reverse the role. So I have the weapon, okay? And I'm trying to cheat grab, boom. And instead of getting to that motion of wanting to cut somebody, realize you have other weapons that you are moving to a technique, not using a cutting motion. Third job, stop around my wrist. to get trapped, okay? And what I mean by trapped is you have the weapon and you think now you have the power and this weapon is providing you the power, right? So that's all you're focused on is the singularity, you know? Ah, I can stab them, I can cut them, you know? Um, what you need to start to understand is that this isn't where the power is from. The power is here and if you open your mind to the possibilities, you just flow with it. And what I'm, so if I come here and somebody grabs and they're trying to do a motion on me, they're trying to do gaichi or whatever, I'm no longer, okay, you stop the initial attack and now you're, pro, now you're providing a secondary motion. And I'm just gonna go with that. And I'm no longer fixated on the idea of trying to cut you anymore, okay? So um, the fluidity of, of thought is what we're after, right? Which allows fluidity of movement, and um, allows flexibility in what you want now. Uh, later on, you're gonna have Sensei Marius come up, and you know, I remember him saying to, to me that, um, you know, if you don't know what you're gonna do, how can your, your opponent know? So you have to be fluid. You're not going in with an objective, if you will, okay? And that's hard to, to you know, reprogram our brains to do that, but, um, these exercises are, are a, a way to start to get them, right? And so when you guys have time, you're playing with each other before class, after class, you're experimenting, do some of these little drills and try to, and do it with intention, meaning uh, don't just, ah, let's just mess around and just try to cut each other, you know? And do that. Do it with a training mind and um, stop yourself when you recognize that you, oh, I just went into conflict mode objective mode and I need to redo that. Let's fill it again, boom, and reset. Um, because if you train incorrectly, then you will do it incorrectly. Okay, so um, anyway, so that's my, the concept I was playing with today, with understanding uh, primary and secondary emotions, uh, understanding how to flow with the energy, how not to get, let your mind get trapped into an objective. Um, and you know, these are bigger concepts, but we have pretty advanced people here, so. That makes it fun. We can play with these things. That's why I like seminars. We don't have to sit and you know go over how to do ikkyo today. You know, even though that is absolutely important. You know, um, if not perhaps one more. Okay, so uh, we'll go ahead and just um, uh, take a minute or two uh, just to get a.
quick glass of water because I was running you guys around going. So just a quick, and we'll come right back with Sensei Wobble. Okay. Right. 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 Ishisaka Sensei Harry Kiyoshi Ishisaka in 1974 and stayed here um, for about three years after his passing, three years after his passing. Then I moved on because I was pressing, I was interested in, in finding and doing and checking other things out. Ishisaka Sensei, when he was alive, he encouraged all of us to train wherever we wanted to. So I trained some Shogun Karate. Trained uh, with uh, Danny and Sando a little bit a long time ago when they were over on Carson or on Pencha, uh, that kind of stuff. Always came back to play here. After uh, his passing, I, I think the dojo became more family oriented after his passing than it was before. I think. I don't know. Uh, Walter's been around this place longer not, than I have. and. Uh, I met Walter probably in 74. <laughs> so he and I are old dogs. We've been playing this game for a long time. But anyway, so that's that. Uh, um, my email, if you know it, it's got Kiyoshi in it. That's my way of honoring his grandfather. And I took it upon myself when I was meditating one time to take some responsibility for Brandon Sensei's future. Because when I met him, he was about this tall. He had this plastic bomb from the Pirates of the Caribbean or someplace. And he ran around the dojo and his grandfather didn't control him at all. There was no control of the It was all over the place, throwing that bomb and making big, right? Making big fights and all going, control that kid at all? <laughs> so here he is, all these years later, in charge and doing a marvelous job. Okay. Um, I want to just make some comments about uh, my all of us have been around a long time. We've trained in a lot of different places. Terminology, words are the same, but the use of the word is different. You know, for, for me, yeah, it's just crap. For me, this is primary pressure here. This is primary pressure. <coughs> secondary pressure is whatever else I do. That's, I'm not, secondary pressure is not him attacking the second time. It's not secondary pressure. It's just terms. You just have to understand what the terms are and use them that way. Uh, the other thing is that this is, for me, with weapons that I don't like them, I just didn't shoot you as try to contend over your knife or whatever, if I had a gun. I don't have a gun. Oh, you're here. <laughs> this is the cold side. This is the cold side. For him to attack me again, he has to turn. Okay? This is the hot side. For him to attack me, all he has to do is attack me. This is just something to keep in mind. I like to go to the outside. I would prefer to go to the outside here than I would go inside. If I'm going to go inside, and they all know that, he's going to get, he's going to get a big one. So I'm going to hit him hard as I can. Using, using the whole body, I'll use that kind of stuff. So what I'd like to start with, grab both hands. This is conflict. Point of conflict, this is a standing. How do we get out of this? If I'm strong enough, I can move them, get under them. So how do we get out of this? Iwama style, here, very powerful. For me, just play with it without me saying anything more. Right. Two hand grab, hold them tightly, and play with it. Let's see where it goes. Thank you, Mike. Most of us, I've gone through being around 155 pounds. Some have got to stay around 155 most of their life. He'll probably be 135 when he's 96. I'm good. He's good. The rest of us have expanded our horizons, so to speak, <laughs> over time. So we've got to the point where we depend upon that a lot, too. Right? So, so from here, you're grabbing. Little Laura's put that there. So, he pushes up, 
gets me this way, right? Now he's got me locked, right? Now, where am I? Here. Right? Oh, that. So what I should be able to do is this. I should have that. I should have that going for me. That's this cross connection all over through here. Right? The other one is to pull me away. That's what happens, right? So if I connect across, go ahead. Don't jerk me, just pull me apart. I should be able to, I should be able to maintain this. Okay. So play with, if you get up here, if it jacks you up, how do you get out of this? You can roll it down to it, this way. But just play with that a little bit. Shoulders up, they've got you off. How do you get it back? <laughs> I don't have time to, I can't dance around. At 73, I'm not, 72, I'm not going to be dancing around very long. So I'm trying to either stay away from it altogether, not go there, or end it quickly if I have to. So you pick the smallest button. <laughs> that was the other thing that somebody taught me here. Pick the smallest people and use them because they're easier to throw. I think it was John that told me that, but I'm not sure. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't John. So, you know, you can come through with this too. You can come through with this. She's right there. So you don't have to do don't have to do that. You can do it if you want to. It's in your toolkit. Use it. If it comes up in the circumstance, as Walter will probably talk about, wherever it appears, you take it. it may never appear either. You may have to kick them or bite them or do something else like that. But for me, I would just assume right here. Once she knows that I can do this, I have to do this. I can pull it through. I can let it come through. It's intensified. So, play with a little bit with this. I don't want to throw anybody away either because they're going to get up from the mat. For me. On the mat, that's fine because that's your practice. From someplace else, I don't want to throw them away because they're going to get back up. Come back. Unless you talk them out of it. So I would just assume they were here. Then I could just look at this. Look right there or whatever I want to do to it if I want to do that. Right? So play with this, play with this part too. Right down. Soft hands. Or 
get away. I'm not going to fight him over it. But that's what you would expect, and that's what you did. You guys end up wrestling on the, on the mat. A couple of minutes, please. Hey, thanks, Thank you. Somehow it never works out that way. So I hope I share something with you that you can take and find a place to use. Put it in your kit bag. Pull it out when you need it. Explore it if you want to. You know, we're all going in different directions because that's the way this art is. You know, my art's, my art's driving more towards that than it is. Uh, Aikido as an art form, or that's the beautiful too. You see some beautiful details. Great story. And there's all, so it's split wherever it started, whenever it started, 40s, early, late 30s. It's moved in many different directions because once it gets spread out, it's like the, it's like the, Christians in, in New Orleans, famous restaurant, family owned, stuff like that. One of the sons wanted his own restaurant, so he moved across the river. Probably chef in from Paris. After three years, the chef went back. The recipes were different. They weren't. They had added a few Cajun spices and other stuff in it. So we all do that. We, everything changes with us. So you have to go with that. You have to love that and play with it. We're all going to look different. We're all going to approach it differently. Yeah, it's I'm still trying to get one. I haven't found a cane I can carry and use yet. I don't need one, but I like to carry one. Beauty likes his swords and all that stuff, and I just sit and have a cane, it's like a cookie that's snapped a little bit or something like that. That's what we do. Bobby, you're so serious. There you go. <laughs> that's what I remember from you, is this one. All right, thank you all very much. I think we're going to take a couple minutes for water. Yes. Thank you again, all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. so tight that that you're focused on it and you're trying to figure out and you figure you can't even move your arm and actually if you just let it go you can actually go around it but the letting go is an insecurity in a sense you know, I have to hold my control and without that control I don't feel that I have anything and yet if I can let go of it I can move around it so those are some ideas that I, I, I would like you to, to sort of keep in mind um, I can give you some examples and then we'll go uh, um, to some strikes, okay? And we'll do a little bit of that. 
and this idea eventually of just sort of flowing into your partner. Um, and going around them or just once you hit once you hit uh, sort of resistance how to how to just go through it how to move through it rather than reinforcing it so um, so my partner um, the idea is my partner has uh, this is tight yeah and uh, we've gone through this before but the point is that we learn a lot of Gary even started with this you got there's a lot of uh, different sort of mechanics that I can use but the first mechanic is to move not the hand but the body all right and I really mean by that is we could do all this but I can try and do this and at this point if he's holding and I'm telling him to stay solid I'm gonna fight it yet if I do this and then turn my body I'm gonna move him. so this is one big thing that we run into in other words if I'm gonna move in I should be using my hips to move in all the time most of the time we start out and we start doing this pull, right? And the problem is that as soon as you do that, you set up a little bit of resistance. So two things. You can do it this way, and that is sort of more mechanical. Eventually what you want to do is let it go limp, and then just make the movement, all right? So if you try this, you find you can go in, and you, we can even get to that technique. But what I'd like you to try is that, and then what I'd like you to do is just let the arm go in. Relax this. Now, there's something else about this. If he pushes up, he can't move my arm. That's the other problem. If the arm is loose, usually what we expect to happen is going to pick up, it's going to go up, right? One of the things you have to learn is it can be loose, but it should be unbendable, however you want to express that. So there's a connection. There's a connection from the body through uh, however you want to look at it, but the body is integrated, connected, which allows, when he pushes, for the force to be distributed in a different way. If I go, if I stiffen this, he's going to move me. If I keep it relaxed but integrated into the rest of me, the force that he's applying is being dissipated. It's the tangents are moving in different directions. If I give him a solid connection like this, then he has a solid place to push. So what I'm doing here is just keeping this loose. So now what I can do is I can just simply step in, turn, move, and draw. So eventually the technique is he's already you know, The other thing I slightly do is when my partner grabs, he's already on. It's a little bit. Even when it's um, static, he's already on. Why? He pushed my hand. I let it go. All right, so you're breaking balance. You're breaking balance as it comes in. You're breaking it right away. This is healing. Right? Right. Don't even have to get real fancy about it. Once this happens, you keep the movement going. All right, so we don't have to sort of like formal. And this is. So, in that sense, so he comes in, this is here, this moved. Right, Gary was talking about this immediately. The point is, the hand should be like, even if it's here, right? even if it's at your side, you should be able to practice when it's grabbed to draw your partner off balance. Like he's already off balance. So it's a subtle change, but I can't do that if I'm stiff. Right, so basically all you do is or we can do the formal arm. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Give it a shot. Yeah. It's a depressing thing. Thank you. Now, what I'm doing is this back leg, I move to here, it drops it down. All right, it's just dropping it down. Uh, in other words, some of you are here and you're trying to do it all through here. So when I do this, I keep this loose. This knee is bent. So I'm dropping. My contact is here, right? So don't put forward a uh, point of contact and source of power. Don't do this. Do this. All right, so I move this to drop him. This has just brought him close to me. 
and also tilted him. Also, the step back tilts a little bit. And then I drop, and I just drop, bend his knee. All right, try it. <laughs> Let this come up. Step back and drop. Some of you with a height skipper need to drop. So when this is done in full speed, drop this down. That's all. It's just quick. This is down this way. The hand drops and turns. This is here. This is down. My knees are already bent. All right. That's what it should be done. So it's this way. That initial motion, right? What's also happening is his body's springing a little bit back up, right? If I just do it, have to see he's coming up, right? That's what I'm trying. So you go and take advantage. Of it. This is here. This is here. So this is light. This movement is the but this is what you don't need to pull. This is what you don't see. The right rule. This drops. This I know is coming. You need to always expect more than, you know, we always practice one attack. No, more than one attack. So he comes, you know, go this way. You may change what he's doing, too. So I need to move in relation to that. Right? And try not to, try to carry his first, try not to stay in front and keep pushing. So you're really pushing at him. I need to be moving with him. I need to be moving with him. So I then uh, get the balance, right? Because the other way, if I'm pushing and pulling and not breaking his balance, in other words, I'm just doing this and this, I'm going to try and he can, he feels me. So how do I do that? This goes with it. This goes with it. Throw. Let's try it. We'll go from here, right? I need it. So that first I need it. This is a self Um, there's something else too. Uh, if I do 
is this and I'm struggling with him and here and all of a sudden I feel a resistance, right? Because I'm trying to do something. How do I change that? So I tell my students that right, when you start finding resistance on his part, you need to flow in. And it's like... Alright, so... Sometimes, you know, you guys practice like this, and then you do this, and then you're like this, and you're trying to do this, and this is the conflict. So rather than the conflict, the body goes in. And the idea of flow. Right? So I can do it loosely and inside. Right? There are a lot of different ways of looking at flow. is that as soon as I feel connection, this is stiff, I've got all this. But as soon as I do this, I stop. Right? Because I'm trying to, well, this, this could work, I have to make a big movement. Right? Yeah, the reason for the big movement is to try to get him so that I can do something. But, Reality, that's not what we want. I'm going to flow in and around his arm. So a lot of times I have my students practice moving in different ways. Coming in underneath. And then take them out. Sometimes just moving by him. Oh. is as your partner comes in, try to think of a different way of entering. So you can come this way, this is coming, and this is the way over here. Just different ways. Take this down, take this this way. Bring it down. So drop it, so drop, so drop it. Hi. Drop it. And just this way. Now, the way I'm dropping it, my elbow is dropping it. The weight is this way, not this way. This is this way. So, drop, 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 hey. drop. Try. Let's go. The expression connected body. Keeping one point, a lot of different ways of expressing it. That lets you do the art very differently. You're not harried, you're not rushed. You need to keep yourself calm, right? And you're in contact with, with Uke as soon as you look at them. They haven't done anything, but you're already touching them. So there's that contact. On a mat, you're in contact with everybody. Right? So somebody comes, then you respond in a calm way. If you keep it broken between the two of you and they come, you always have that. Even if it seems that you move, there's always the sudden movement. But it's not a spontaneous movement. Sudden is a lot of times this way, a matter of speed and this way. Spontaneous is just there. And that only comes when you're relaxed. And so you need to practice doing the art relaxed rather than when you find yourself tense, relax. Take a breath in. You know, sometimes uh, when you're uh, anxious and you find yourself going, so, and start again to keep yourself calm, keep everything connected. Right? The body connection, I can't overemphasize, even though a lot of times it's not spoken about, but it's really good. So Sensei did it, or Sensei had it, there's a definite connection there. It's critical to making the art fluid and easy and something you don't have to think about when you begin. Okay. Right. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So it's lunchtime right now, so we have an hour break. Um, 
you know, there's a bunch of restaurants right over here. Uh, so that's probably where I'd recommend. Um, over on this side, you got uh, McDonald's. Uh, that's fast. Um, I don't know what else other McDonald's is over there. Yeah, there's a couple of burger places. Yeah, a couple of burger places over there. But over here is Del Taco. Yeah, Five Guys. You got uh, Wing Stop. What's that? El Thai Place just down there. Yeah, Thai Place right next door. El Pollo Loco, so I'll go this side. Okay, so an hour break, we'll come back. All right. Thank you. We're now embarking upon the next 50 years for uh, Orange County Ikea, so that's a kind of a special thing. And it's a burden on Brandon, my good Ikea buddy, because he's going to have to carry the ball now for another 49 years. <laughs> 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 um, so we were asked those of us that were invited to teach here to share with you some element to a piece of the Kia that we felt was, would be important to you. So there are really two elements that I think are often neglected in Aikido. One of which is how we deal with attacks from the lower extremities. And the other piece is um, the Kemi. So it's always been in fact, I remember when I was coming up, Maria as Sensei, I was always so interested in being a good uke that, uh, uh, for those of you who don't know history, this is a good tradition for me, or his deshi, I should say, for, for six years. So, um, I always wanted to learn how to be perfect at Aiki Falls. And his response to me was, well, anyone that you get up from, Mike, is good enough. Which makes a lot of sense. But I think that there's a lot of room for improvement. And uh, because my background is I'm a holistic healer, um, our physical positioning and how we land is all important. And so I think because you guys probably ate too much, we'll start with that because the other part is going to be a little rigorous. So uh, I'd like to demonstrate for you what I'm talking about. Now, this is kind of an amalgamation of two forms of ukeme, one that was uh, given to us by uh, Toyota Shihan, and um, also another element that has been given to me by uh, Chiba Sensei. And so those two are kind of juxtaposed, but I'm going to blend them here for what I think you'll find to be a very um, safe and great way to practice ukeme, even when you get into my age. So um, without any further discussion. Mike, Kite Kudasai. It's sunset. What do you guys show us? So we'll start with a simple uh, uh, rotatory uh, Tenshinaga movement. So he's going to stay connected to me and extend himself as much as possible to get my. Because often if we just do a simple, uh, do, some, do a simple roll back. So, yeah. Not very martial, he's not, he's giving me his back, he's not focused on me. So in, in this manner, if you'll note, he stays, yeah, he has eye contact with me and he's able to get it right away. Now when he hits the mat, he is in a nice straight line. So his spine is in a straight line the whole time. So you can use this for anything that you have to normally take a high fall from, you can still do this type of mechanic. Um, over the last year or two, uh, in our dojo, we've been making a point of everybody learning the feather fall and all of that. That's nice, but again, your spine is still in a bent position. And uh, I know that Matsuoka Sensei is going to be here later. So he took the probably the most horrendous falls <laughs> of any of us for decades. And truthfully very dangerous landing real high on your shoulders. So this is, uh, again, something that I think that you'll enjoy. So let's just start with just this uh, this uh, rotatory, uh, hey. 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 So please grab a part. So what do we do back when we forward forward? Because we pretty much, once the technique has been initiated by Nage, most of us have pretty much resigned ourselves to the fact that we're going to fall. 
can just blend with it whatever way you can. But um, often we had learned the rolling procedure simply because it was a quick and easy way to get up. So if you're training hard for hours and hours and hours, that was a great way to get right back up. This is something a little more effort to get up. But again, it's keeping your spine straight, which is really, really important. We've had accidents uh, going back a few years in Northern California where a young Udantra was teaching and uh, she was demonstrating rolling and a baby suit fell on her as she was rolling over the back and uh, cervical injury and she's paralyzed. So, so yeah, and we, and we know that in a seminar environment, it's normally really crowded and so those possibilities are there. So, and this keeps us from having to even do a, a a high fall, my key take for this stuff, from having to take a normal high fall. I'll just move this key. So if you can do this instead of having to do a normal high fall, you can just go ahead and roll out to the outside and keep his eye on me and get up. So again, he's hitting the mat perfectly straight. That's the big important piece. And uh, this actually lends itself for older guys not as much energy consuming as trying to do a roll. So uh, let's try it from Kodagaishi. Okay. Nobody got to do that. Just for a few minutes. <laughs>
always want to protect your cervical spine, right? And then a straight back feet up. Reach. Knee. So important. This is resting right here before you fall. Reach. Knee. Hey. So just so everybody's safe, that's the way we want to fall. Okay? Hey. So, uh, another form of Riminagi could be performed from the outside. So, all you need to do is bring it straight up, take some straight back. So again, my giri, giri minage. That way we don't have to do that. Pick them back up, pull them back down. But we keep okay, moving to a position of imbalance. And so what, what we discovered is if I change the height of my partner, their motion slows down. Anytime you push something up, they don't move as fast as they do when they're standing up. And the idea behind this eating minagi is keep them moving. So what I from right here, I'm not doing this. Because as soon as I do that, it just slows down. So I'm going to do this. So I'm trying to keep it on a easy pace so that the move can move, make the most of the work. I don't have to work the most. So give that a try for that.
So we'll work through uh, several variations. This will be the first one. There's no end change on this. Now we have four beginnings <coughs> of four throws, right? This is no hand change. We did one head through. No hand change. Fuck you. Then we did shimonagi. Head side first, left side, right? Four shimonagi. Like two. Try something. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we have no hand change. We have two different, we have the head entry, and, but if, if there's, a, there's another variation here is, oh, I'm sorry, the shibonage one. Uh, the reason I'm saying shibonage is because I, I can get rid of one of her hands if no longer holding my hand. When they're no longer holding the hand, then you can go here. You can put it behind the back. Okay, so anytime you free your hand, you have the option of doing the crocheted hand. Remembering all this, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you can 
start from the front, right? From here. Now the sankyo we drop with the hundred grass first. One. Now this is the sankyo that we do in Aikido Kobayashi and it's not straight down. It does not work. It's good to set up some other techniques. But, yeah. And we go down and to the side. So it's like 45 degrees angle. Not just down, not just to the side, but both at the same time. Also, the hand I'm holding Sankhya with, the same way as the front. I'm changing it. Now the finishes, is stretch it 
first up, lay it down, sun kill, and on top of that I apply yon kill here on the outside. Alright? So up, stretch, now back, and then 45 degrees straight. So two techniques. One. about what, what can I share today and, um, and this event really makes me think a lot and 40 years ago when I started um, and I realized um, yeah the same time today is uh, uh, that, that makes me uh, uh, makes this day uh, my, my, my memorial too you know <laughs> because I, my memory go back to the 40 years ago and when 70 I started uh, at that time, my, my teacher, previous teacher, uh, moved from America to Tokyo, then moved from Tokyo to Osaka. And uh, pretty much, uh, yeah, came from, uh, you know, in, in America, so looks really an American guy you know, teaching in Aikido in, in Osaka, Japan. And that's really remind me. Uh, <laughs> and then his teacher, Isaga-sensei, so, uh, uh, wow, it's, it's for me a big father. <laughs> yes, I'm very, uh, um, very honored uh, being here and share something. And I was thinking, and because since also this is my uh, uh, my memorial <laughs> day, so um, I can maybe I want to share. And at that time, 70s, uh, I, I, my previous teacher used to teach often the technique, yeah, which I, I normally we don't practice uh, right now. So kind of memory. So <laughs> myself, I push myself, you know, encourage myself. Um, my original point, right? when I started 40 years ago. Um, yeah, that's probably uh, I'd like to share. Which I don't practice, which I, that time I, I hated that technique. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, anyway. Um, so, uh, is it ready? It's spread out?
one of the very strong, strong. If you don't understand, that, that, that's okay. You can just drop, drop. Very 
again, it 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 again uh, different between this very object. No, no, that's not no irimi. You see, irimi. Very right. That's it. Yeah. And tenkan. So this way, I can use my axis. You see, every time Co connected to him. You know, heavy, right here. See? So, for instance, you use the same. It will take up. Very light. This guy that came up to me and said, Hey, I know you. Yeah. And he had a little bit of wavy black hair. And I looked at him, I said, Gee, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> and he said, You know, we were drafted in the army together. And we went to basic training together. And he turned out to be Oshiro Sensei. <laughs> That, that was my introduction to uh, the Orange County I think I. And the dojo, you know, was very, very friendly and very warm. And uh, I think it started with uh, Harry Ishizaki Sensei because he was a warm and very giving person and he radiated you know, his vibes. So, you know, that set the tone of how uh, we practice and uh, how, how the dojo developed. It was a very social uh, dojo. And then I began to think, gee, I, I know I can withstand the training, but I don't know if I can withstand the social one. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so, you know, the warmth that Harry you know, uh, projected, you can call it aloha spirit, and made me realize, you know, that the kind of vibes that you give off, you know, influences the whole situation. So everything is connected by vibes and the, the kind of energy. 
So that, that was one of the things that stand out in my uh, recollection. Another highlight was uh, taking a class from Tohei Sensei when he came. You know, in addition to four principles of coordinating mind and body, uh, one of the things that he said really, uh, really struck me. You know, and what, what he said was that when he first started training in, in martial arts, he had visions of you know, coming across a beautiful woman being attacked by uh, you know, some thugs and go in there and save the day and become a hero. <laughs> but he said, but that never happened. <laughs> so he said, you know, and so he decided that if he's going to train and put this much energy into his training, that he might as well train in a way that what he gets out of it can be applied every day to his daily life. And so, you know, that gave me a perspective of what the training was about. It was more of a personal development rather than training to protect yourself in case you get attacked. And uh, Ishizaka Sensei passed away in 1978. Same year I met Tano Tenshin Roshi, who was the uh, Zen master of the Rinzai Sen. Developed, you know, a temple and a dojo in Hawaii. He's from Hawaii originally, and so I became his student, and I trained in Zen, you know, with him well, until he passed away in 2003. So that had a very uh, significant impact you know, on, on my development because it uh, also gave me you know, a perspective on, on my training and a perspective in, in, you know, how I view life and how I relate to things. Uh, Zen, you know, is a practice and the basic practice is that meditation. And meditation, you know, is really a practice in posture, breath, and mind. You know, if your posture is right, your breathing becomes right. When your breathing becomes right, your consciousness changes. Your focus becomes here and now. Our everyday consciousness you know, it's either in the past or in the future. Because we're constantly thinking. Words and concepts. We think in terms of and so we're processing. And words and concepts is never here and now. It's in the past or in the future. It kind of reminded me of uh, what how Yogi Berra responded when somebody asked him, hey, Yogi, what time is it? And Yogi says, you mean right now? <laughs> so, and if you say, yeah, Yogi, well, yeah, right now, then it becomes speechless. And that's being here now. <laughs> but I'll, I'll go into this and try to apply it to some of the things that we do. So posture, you know, you have to look at it in terms within the context within which you know, you're, you're trying to develop your posture. And the context is gravity. Gravity is constantly pulling down. And uh, to deal with gravity effectively, you have to align various segments of your body you know, so that it's perpendicular to this plane. <clears throat> then gravity pulls out and holds the various segments together. Okay. 
if it's not aligned, you this slip. Gravity is pulling down, so it's kind of pulling your body apart. So your upper body is separating from your lower body. And you're not balanced. But if it's aligned, 